two Sundays, it's good to be home. Good to see you all with your faces. Good to be in my house. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with us. Very much so. Well, a couple of things I want to talk about <clears throat> uh, very quickly before we go into the Word is that um, uh, today we're celebrating also our seventh anniversary. Seventh anniversary of what? Can, you, can you, anybody guess? Tell me. You know, church. In the, new building. in the new building, in the new church, that's, that's it. Um, we, we had our, our dedication service around Halloween, around this time, um, in 2010. Here we are, 2017. <clears throat> We've been in the building, the new building, approximately seven years. And... Um, the Lord has blessed, uh, blessed us with the new building. I don't know if you all, how I many of you remember the building before the fire, but uh, uh, this is a, a great improvement and uh, a blessing from the Lord. And we just want to thank Him for these things. Um, and very quickly, uh, this time of year, once a year, we we'll talk, talk briefly about it, and I, and, and I will talk about it more at length uh, in, this, in the adult Sunday school class. But um, we, as a church, will use Halloween as, a, as an opportunity, just one more opportunity to spread the gospel, which is why we hand out Halloween tracks with the candy. Uh, and they, you said there are some Halloween tracks out there on the uh, out there on the literature table. And if you're going to hand out um, uh, candy at, at your door, they don't come to my house anymore. My, I guess my block isn't uh, that inviting. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but um, um, if you're going to hand hand out candy, hand out uh, something that speaks of Jesus too. And uh, as a church, um, we kind of stay away from Halloween um, uh, because we don't feel that it is a holiday that really glorifies the Lord. Um, you notice how they bring out everything ugly in Halloween, all the monsters and, and, and the horror movies and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, we'll talk. Uh, a bit more about that and give you a bit more information and understanding uh, in the adult Sunday school class. Let, let me say this. We are not legalistic about this, about this whole Halloween thing, which means that I have the freedom in Christ uh, to go trick-or-treating or whatever else, whatever else I want to do. I have the freedom in Christ to do that. You know why? Because every day, including October 31st, the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. The, the bottom line that God has, has made every day, and every day is to be dedicated to Him. And the devil doesn't give any holidays. He doesn't, we don't give the devil any day. Oh, devil, this, this day is yours. No, 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 no. On October 31st, we say, this too is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad. And that's our freedom in Christ and, and our right as, as children of God. Okay, enough of that. We want to talk this morning about the missing piece of armor. What am I talking about? 
Uh, you, all, you all are familiar with Ephesians chapter 6? Put on the whole armor of God. We'll talk, we're going to talk about these things. You know, <clears throat> well, let's, let's start with prayer. Father, we thank you so much, Lord. I thank you for this word. I thank you for the fact that you have given this to me, Lord. You put it all together. All of it, Lord. I thank you for your emphasis as opposed to mine. Now, help me to speak this under your anointing. I pray, Lord. You know, we've talked <clears throat> we've talked much in the church world about the whole armor of God out in Ephesians chapter six. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand during the evil day. But I pose a question, do we have the whole armor? I submit to you that there is one crucial piece that we leave out. We often leave it out. That one crucial piece. I'll, I'll give you a portion of Ephesians chapter 6. We'll start at verse 16. plate of righteousness and the, the shield of faith and so on and so on. We'll pick it up at verse 16. And, and I give you just a few pieces of the armor here as we quote Paul. Just so that you can have the next few verses in their proper context. Okay? <clears throat> I'm not just cherry picking scriptures out. I want you to have them in their proper context. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And, and generally, we stop there when we start talking about the whole armor of God. We stop there with the idea of the shield of faith and so on and so forth. But it goes on. Now we read through verse 17. Verse 18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me. Ooh, I love that. So that I may, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. And I submit to you, as, I, as I, I'm calling this word this morning, uh, the missing piece of armor, that the missing piece that we often leave out, that, that the church world leaves out because I've never really heard it spoken like this until the Lord started opening it up to my heart. The missing piece of armor is prayer. And, and, and I, I give it to you like this because in Paul, I give it to you in context because as Paul was speaking about it, about prayer right along with all the other pieces of armor. Okay? And, and it is evident that they go together. 
The armor doesn't stop with the, the shield and so on and so forth. There's another aspect. And our armor is not complete if we are not given to prayer. Okay, given to prayer. Given to prayer. Um, I'm going to use those words a number of times. I want you to get them. When, it, when I give myself to something, I go all out for that. Okay? When I give myself to something, it, I have made the decision to make that something my emphasis. And, and, and when I said to you now, give yourself to prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is, is see, I, I find it necessary to ask that question because uh, so many of us have, have funny little religious ideas about what prayer is. Prayer is when maybe we all get down on our knees and, and do like this and say flowery things to God. In King James English, Almighty oh, God, thou art wonderful, and we beseech thee. No. Prayer is just talking to God from your heart. And talking with God through the power of the Holy Spirit also. And we're going to talk about that. Because that's one of the things that Paul says in verse 18 there. And, and I highlighted those verses in yellow. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. What does that mean? It's, it's crucial that we understand that because we're talking about this missing piece of the armor. It means real prayer. In other words, prayer that is in contact with heaven. You know, when we are children, we sit down at the table. I, I'm, I'm telling you my childhood. You sit down at the table for dinner, and uh, you have to uh, say a little prayer. Okay, and that's just training children. That's, a, that's, that's how I was trained as a small child. You sit down at the table and, and basically said a Bible verse. <laughs> you know, um, uh, sit down at the table, and when it was your turn, you said, uh, 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 Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Mm -hmm. Or, um, if you were really hungry and didn't want to do it, you were just trying to obey and get it over with, you said, uh, Jesus wept. <laughs> Two words, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Okay, right, that's not prayer. Okay, prayer is not some little memorized line. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Prayer is communication between the human spirit and heaven itself. That's why we're to pray in the Holy Spirit. Not pray just in our own thoughts and our own minds. And, and um, because our own thoughts and minds can be foolish at times. <laughs> Have you noticed? You know what I mean?
Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Pray in the Spirit. How is this done? Well, I have a lot of uh, Pentecostal friends and Pentecostal friends who are pastors who will tell you that praying in the Spirit um, means that you pray in tongues. Well, what about the people who don't have the gift of tongues? How do they pray in the Spirit? Okay, if praying in the Spirit is praying in tongues. Because Paul says when he's talking about the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, he takes the whole chapter and to emphasize with many different examples and analogies that we all are gifted by the same Holy Spirit, but that that Holy Spirit gives us all different gifts as, as, it, as he sees fit that we might serve in the body of Christ, that everybody doesn't have the same gift. And he ends up that chapter in 1 Corinthians 12 by saying, as he's summing it up, he says, now, are all apostles? Okay, now I want you to understand that he's asking a, what's called a rhetorical question. Okay, a rhetorical question has an obvious answer. If I say, um, if I would say, uh, 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 here, brother, you, you, you want this $20 bill for, for just for fun, for, with no strings attached? And to say yes, he would say, is the Pope Catholic? Okay, that's a rhetorical question, you know what I mean? Okay. And, uh, the answer is, of course he is. Paul asks a, rhetorical, a, a, a series of rhetorical questions here. And he says, is, is, are all apostles? Okay, is everybody an apostle? Answer the question. Is everybody a prophet? Let me hear you. Is everybody a teacher? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? No. I mean, there you go. Everybody doesn't speak in tongues. Tongues is a gift that is not given to everyone. If, if the Lord gave it to you, then God bless you. May you prosper in the gift of the Holy Spirit that the Lord has given you. Okay? Um, if you don't have that gift, maybe ask the Lord for it if you want it. And he, he may give it to you if it's, it's within his, his design for your life and your ministry. But I give you this to say that praying in the Spirit is not necessarily praying in tongues. Okay? It's not necessarily. Everybody is to pray in the Spirit, but not everybody is going to pray in tongues. Sorry. All right, so uh, I just want you to get that. Because, uh, again, uh, I, I know people who teach, and you will know them too. They say, pray, pray in the Holy Spirit, and that means start speaking in tongues. Or, or making those sounds. Have mercy on us, Lord. Because, see, I can stand here and make the sounds, okay? Uh, now, I am one who, do, who at times does pray in tongues. I do, okay? That's, that's, that's what the Lord has done in my life. 
But I can stand here and go, Shaframaramasinda Was I speaking in tongues? Was that the Holy Spirit? Don't be stupid. <laughs> no, that's just Pastor Bill Noam putting the syllables together. <laughs> okay? Okay, and if you people say, okay, I want you to pray in the spirit, and you start you start putting the syllables together. And it has nothing to do with your spirit and the gift of God in you. You just conforming with, with put the syllables together. That has nothing to do with praying in the spirit. Okay? And and, and I say, don't be stupid. <coughs> Paul says when he's talking about this in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, let us, not, let us stop thinking like children. Okay, he says it much more kindly. Now, in other words, in, a, in today's modern vernacular, it means grow up. What is, speak, what is praying in the spirit? Well, it is praying in concert with the Holy Spirit. It is praying as the Holy Spirit would lead. It is, it is praying, here it is, here it is, more, more succinct. It is praying while you are, while your heart is in contact with heaven. Okay? And that's why I say, uh, and I say it again and again, uh, these words. Give yourself to prayer. Prayer is to be a lifestyle that grows from our heart's commitment to Him. And you see, this is the, I'm, I'm trying to put it in the words, into words the thing the Lord has emphasized in my own heart as I'm putting this word together that we are to live lives. We are called to live lives that, that are in constant contact with heaven. Okay? Constant contact with heaven. You know, we have this silly idea, and it is a religious idea, that uh, maybe sometime during the day we're going to go uh, and go to the park and have some fun. Maybe sometime during the day we're going to have to stop by the store and pick up a few items. Uh, and then uh, sometime during the day, uh, and prepare a meal. And then sometime during the day we're going to uh, stop and pray and tune into God. And, okay. Now, God was there all along while you went to the park, while you went to the grocery store, while you were cooking and eating and, and all the other things you were doing. And, and um, he wasn't out of the picture somehow until you decided to go pray. He was there all along. Okay, now, now get that. And, 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 and live the life that is always aware of that. That God is with you in the park. God is with you in the grocery store. He's right there. He's with you while you're, you're cooking and stirring and chopping and frying or, or picking out what you want to eat at the menu. Okay, he's with you. He just didn't show up when you decided to say, to say okay, I'm going to go pray now. Okay, so... Live a life that has the mindset of that. When I say give yourselves to prayer, that, this is part of giving yourselves to prayer. Having the, the awareness and the mindset that says I can talk with God 
anywhere I am and on any occasion. Okay, uh, uh, E.W. Kenyon is the name that comes to me, uh, who is an author uh, who wrote a book that, that has been famous down through the years in Christian uh, literary circles. It's called Practicing the Presence of God. Practice his presence. Okay, now, we're used to practicing his presence when we decide that we're going to go sit down and pray. But giving yourselves to prayer means practicing his presence in the grocery store. Practicing his presence when you're driving down the street. It will, affect, it will affect the way that you see people on the sidewalk. It will. Because as he looks at the people that you see on the sidewalk, often his heart breaks for the conditions that they're in. Practice the presence of the Lord. Sometimes God will call us to prayer. And he does it at times when you'd rather be doing something else. Okay, that's the truth. The Lord says, come spend, come, come and pray. Come spend time with me. And, and, and when it happens to me, it is a, an invitation that has a sweet aroma that I'm being called into the presence of the Lord. And part of my training, part of my discovery of the Lord is doing with me is to stop what I'm doing there turn the computer off or the TV or whatever and just get quiet with just just get quiet with the Lord. And then speak to me and whatever it is he wants to say, whatever it is he's trying to do. Okay. We're told in scripture to wait upon the Lord. I mean, it's just spending time with him. How do, we're talking about now how to pray in the Spirit. It starts with giving yourself to prayer. Giving yourself, because this is God's will for our lives. And if you seek his will for your life, you'll get it. Here's another little clue, little, little, I say little clue that I found, uh, a, a key point that I found of, of practicing the presence of the Lord or practicing his presence in prayer. Um, pray your worship. Pray your worship. You know, uh, sometimes it just strikes your heart and you just say, oh Lord, I love you. And, or, or you hear a, a worship song and it just wants to take your heart and worship. Okay, turn that, in, turn that into prayer. Pray your worship. Tune in to the presence of the Lord and worship Him from there. We're called to love the Lord. That's, that's one of the greatest commandments. They asked Jesus. Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and soul and mind and strength. And the second is like to love your neighbor as yourself. So, we understand that when we ask the Lord for what he already tells us he wants from us, he's going to grant that request. So ask the Lord to help you to love him. 
you find yourself able to tune into the presence of the Lord. Tune into the presence. See, listen. We're talking about how to live a life that is in contact with heaven. We're talking about how to be God's supernatural people here on earth. Okay, now uh, don't be afraid of that term, supernatural. And this is a stupid TV show on TV called Supernatural. And then this is full of spooky stuff. Okay. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Supernatural is the life that you and I live as we are in contact with heaven. God is a supernatural God, and we are called to walk in more than just the natural. We walk in the supernatural. That's how we are able to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Okay? Because we are walking in more than what is natural. And, and, and when we walk in contact with heaven the Lord will speak to you about people standing in front of you okay, he will because heaven is calling them to hear me hear me listen heaven is calling them to You may be sitting in a restaurant, getting ready to order a hamburger, looking at the menu, and the waitress walks up. Can I take your order, sir? And the Lord speaks to you about the waitress. Okay. And uh, that's a supernatural moment, y'all. Mm -hmm. I've done that. I've done this with strangers. Some of them look at me like I'm crazy. But most of them are wild. Because how could I know these things and talk to them about this? Or, or because I was in contact with heaven when I said what I said to them, whatever it was. Heaven touched them. Okay? That's what they can't deny. That when you start speaking, something changed. I felt that. I felt that. Heaven touched them. That's what they can't deny. And you may be speaking the words that saved their souls, that brought them out of darkness towards the light. I remember I was riding the tractor, the, the long tractor, cutting the grass. And I was right around here on Santa Clara, right around, right out here. And uh, Darren Mitchell walked down the sidewalk. And here I am sitting behind the wheel and riding this, this tractor, thing making all this noise. You know the lawnmower, make all this noise. And the Lord spoke to me, it, it's time for him to come in and, and get, his, get his life right with the Lord. The Darren was out there smoking his brains out. Okay. I stopped the track to turn that, turn that sucker off and, and called him, Darren, come here. And I just told him, when you walk by, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, it is time for you to come in and, and make your life right with the Lord. And he heard it. Because, because when I told him that, that was a supernatural moment. The Lord stepped in. It wasn't just me talking. It was the Holy Spirit allowed him to sense the truth of my words. Okay? And you know what? Uh, about a year and a half, two years later, Two years later, he did. OK? 
Okay, I gave it to him, and, and it took him some time, but he came in, and he got his life right to the Lord. And uh, walked with God and was joyful as he walked with the Lord with us. And the next thing you know, the doctor said he was full of cancer. And he died and went on home to be with the Lord. We had his funeral. This casket set right here. And I look back upon that time and just see it as just one of one of the many times when I was in contact with heaven while riding the tractor, cutting the grass, while the tractor's making all that noise and grass clipping and dust is flying. Okay, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to live my life in contact with heaven. And the Lord used it. I gave him that, I gave him what, what I said the Lord said, tell him. And a couple of years went by, I could have said, oh, well, nothing happened. Oh, yeah, God was still at work. And he came in. And he's probably in heaven, or oh, he's in heaven now, but he's in heaven probably because I obeyed. How to pray in the spirit. Ask God to teach you to tune into his presence at any given time and talk with him. Okay? Remember, I, talk, I talked about, you know, you, we go to the park, we go to the grocery store, we go to the restaurant, we go here, we go there, we go pick kids up, and, da, 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 da. and then we decide to pray. God is in all those places. All those other places that we decided to do before we decided to, that I'm going to go pray now. Ask him to help you to tune into his presence wherever you are. Again, we are called to live connected to, him, to heaven through prayer. This is what helps to make us the people of God. When you give yourself the prayer, you begin to see real growth in your spirit. When you give them in, don't miss this point. I remember when I first made the decision to give myself to prayer many years ago. Um, we were in church and we were the pastor was saying. My old pastor, Francis Frangipane. We need to, we need some people to stay at the church and pray because uh, this, we need to be interceding. And uh, I, I thought I, I'd stay after and, and pray with the man. And this was on a regular basis. After every service, stay after church and pray. And uh, I didn't want to do it. I did it for a few times and I said, ah, okay, I, I'd rather just go in. It's true. But uh, the Lord said, no, you keep doing it. This. And some of the other guys said, no, you, you, you give yourself the prayer. And, and I persisted. And my ability to perceive spiritual things changed. I look back upon it as a time when my spiritual walk with God took an upgrade, okay? I began to see things in the Spirit. I, I began to have greater discernment. See, and I look back upon these things and describe what I began to see in my life. Well, what it was, I was becoming more in tune with heaven, which is what I've been preaching about. Okay? Your, 
your walks with God will take an upgrade. You find real growth in your spirit. Again, this missing piece of armor will take your walks with God to the next level. So in Ephesians chapter 6, when you read, put on the full on, whole armor of God, and he talks about the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and the, and the belt of truth girded around your waist and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel and the, and, the, and, the, and the shield of faith with which you can quench all the fiery darts of the evil one and the soul of the spirit, which is the word of God. Don't stop there. Go on to the next verse and pray in the Spirit on all occasions. On all occasions. Pray in church. Pray at the church. Pray on your way to church. And have you noticed that the enemy will try to get you bent out of shape on your way to church? On your way to church. Okay. Have you, have you noticed that? Okay, all right, because you are on your way into the presence of the Lord, and the enemy wants to get you all, get you, get your focus all twisted up. Maybe it's when that's that's maybe when you the kids you raise want to act up the worst on the way to church in the morning, Sunday morning, where you feel like I could just punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I love you, but I can just twist your head off. Okay? And, and, and then we go to church and praise the Lord. <laughs> and then, it, it, I, I, we laugh about it. But the enemy knows to try to uh, move you off your square. Yes. Yes. Okay? on your way into worship because he's trying to keep you from understanding that we have to live a life that's in contact with heaven. And how does he get you out of contact with heaven? Get you all bent out of shape at people, angry over stupid stuff? Ooh, set up. It's a, it's a set up. Understand, uh, Paul says, uh, understand uh, what the tricks of the devil are. I'll give you my last slide here. Isaiah 56. God is saying he's, he's going to bring all of these people who are far off to himself. He says, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Okay, listen, Church of God. We are, this is to be a house of prayer. We come together and we fellowship. That's wonderful. Christian fellowship is a wonderful thing. But this isn't the house of fellowship. We come together and we hear preaching. Lord, help me to preach under your anointing. That's a wonderful thing. But this isn't the house of preaching. We come together and we worship. That's a wonderful thing. This is more than the house of worship. This is the house of prayer. Okay, I want you to get that. That's God's emphasis. That, and, and, and Paul puts it with the whole armor of God because it's the prayer and the Holy Spirit, the prayer, praying in the Spirit, in concert with the Holy Spirit, praying while we're in contact with heaven, that, that energizes all the rest of the pieces, the shield of faith. Okay? 
What kind of shield are you holding up? A kind of shield of faith are you holding up that, that, that's not energized by the Holy Spirit? The, faith, the shield of faith that's made of cellophane. The, 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 the fiery darts go right through it. I held up the shield of faith and I got hurt. No. Hold up the shield of faith. See, because hold, you, you're, you're living in contact with, with, with God's emphasis as you hold up the shield of faith. It is that emphasis, that, that Holy Spirit that energizes your faith. You understand? All right. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and then just let it grow. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the riches of your word, oh God. And I thank you for giving us understanding, Lord. And help us to be, be men and women of prayer. People who take these things seriously and apply them to our lives. Lord, we need you in this matter. Help us to always have on that missing piece of armor where we're praying in the spirit on all occasions, all kinds of prayers and requests. Lord, a lot of folks only pray when they get in trouble. Lord, um, we thank you for being there with but take our, our, our prayer life miles above that sort of thing. Help us to be those people of God who are constantly in contact with heaven. Father, we pray all of these things in Jesus' name.